Okay, so we should be live for our third and final lesson of this IELTS Key Principles course. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on IELTS Writing Task 2. And we've got some things that I've never shared with anyone before. I just have developed these new techniques, new strategies this week. And I'm going to be sharing this with you today. So as always, just let me check if the technology is working and the lesson can be seen and everything before we shared can. with anyone before I just... excellent so it's working on my phone if you can see the screen which should say IELTS key principles IELTS writing task 2 um, just let me know in the comments that you can see the screen and you can hear me and everything um, and hello to everybody who's saying hello so we will begin in about three minutes and if you again if you're watching the replay of this please just skip ahead two or three minutes and then you'll you'll get the beginning of the lesson facebook takes a few minutes to notify everybody and get everybody into the into the the live lesson so let's just wait a couple of minutes but let me give you just a quick preview of what we're going to be doing today i'm going to be showing you this i'm going to be showing you this I'm going to be showing you this, 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 a real sample essay based on all of that. How to improve your vocabulary, how to improve your grammar using this. Lots and lots and lots of good stuff that I'll be showing you today. And I'm very excited to share it with you because I've never shared this with any students before. Even my VIP students haven't seen this because um, I just made it this week, literally. So I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to be doing in a couple more minutes. And hello to everybody who is saying hello. Excellent. Let me see. And I'm going to mess up all of your names, but Thuda, Rabia, Gun, Tanya, Shakal, Olapadi, Ma, Kulsum, Banjo, Hadia, Janua, Banjo again, Intasir, Alsir, Huma, Polly, Amina, Sumya, Amula, Maple, Apneet. Excellent. Thanks for saying hello, guys. And I'm sorry if I completely mispronounced all of your names. Um, it's difficult um, to pronounce all of the names from all of the different countries correctly but so if I didn't say your name correctly I apologize okay one more minute guys and then we'll begin let's see where some of you guys are from so we have Japan Bangladesh Philippines Uzbekistan Kenya Philippines again, Pakistan, India, Algeria, Bangladesh again. Excellent. Okay. Iran, Libya, Algeria, Kazakhstan. Excellent. Okay, guys, just a few more seconds and then we'll begin because the the counter of the number of people joining us live is going up and up and up and up. So uh, I just don't want anyone to miss the beginning of this lesson because there's some really, really important things happening. So we've got 239 people and a lot more to come. 245 just keeps going up and up. Excellent. Someone says you pronounced it correctly. <laughs> okay, that's probably just luck rather than rather than skill. So, all right, guys. So, let's begin. What are we going to do in this lesson? Um, just a few things before we get into this lesson. Yesterday we did speaking. On Monday we did reading. Um, you, if you didn't watch those lessons, you still have time. But I will be deleting everything at the end of the week. Um, that is not because I'm a horrible person and I want to be mean. It's because if there's a deadline, people will do the work. It, it motivates people to do the work. If there's no deadline, people say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow, and then tomorrow never comes. But when there's a deadline, people tend to do the work. So uh, if you still need to watch those lessons, you can, but you only have a few days left. They're only about 
90 minutes, like the length of a football match. I'm sure many of you have 90 minutes that you can dedicate to this because it will, at the end of the day, improve your life. Um, the IELTS test, the reason why I love teaching IELTS is it can directly improve somebody's life because you can move to the country where you want to move to, you can get the job that you want, earn more money, improve your life, improve your family's life. So it does make a big difference, but you can't improve unless you do the work. So um, you've got until the end of the week. So what are we gonna do in this lesson? We're gonna look at something called the ingredients of a task to opinion essay. How I'm gonna teach this lesson is how a chef would teach you how to cook a dish. Imagine a chef is teaching you how to bake a cake or cook, I don't know, a bowl of soup, whatever. What you need is you need the ingredients. So to bake a cake, you would need sugar, you would need milk, you would need eggs, you would need flour, but you also need a recipe. You need step-by-step -step instructions on what to do. So if the ingredients are bad, the cake is going to be bad, but if the ingredients are good, but the instructions are bad, the, the recipe, then the, the cake is going to be bad as well. But if you have good ingredients, and a good recipe, good instructions, then you're gonna do quite well. So that's what we're gonna focus on in this lesson. So we're gonna give you an essay process flowchart. Don't worry, you'll understand what that means by the end of the lesson. An essay structure plan, a VIP sample essay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you these charts and these flow charts, and then I'm gonna show you how one of my students, one of my VIP students use these and how they use them to produce an essay. I'm also going to help you improve your grammar and your vocabulary because just learning task achievement and coherence and cohesion is not enough. Grammar and vocabulary are 50% of your, your total mark, so it's really important that we, we focus on those as well and show you how to improve those as well. So just before we start, I want to remind you that there are six types of writing task two essays. There are opinion essays, there are discussion essays, there are advantages and disadvantages essays, problems and solutions essays, double question essays, and more what, what I would call unusual questions, ones that don't really fit into any of these five others. The reason why I'm telling you this is I'm sure that you have noticed over the past few days that you know for reading there are many 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 different types of reading question each requires a different approach and a different strategy for speaking part one part two and part three are very very different they require different strategies different approaches different types of answers the exact same thing is happening in task two each of these is a very different type of essay requires a very different structure, a different approach. So everything that I'm gonna teach you in this lesson, we're going to just focus on opinion essays. Why are we doing that? Because literally we don't have time. I don't have time to teach you a six hour lesson, which is what it would take to cover everything. And I, you know, most of you don't have time to do one hour today, never mind six hours. So we're going to focus on opinion essays, but none of the stuff that we say today applies to discussion, advantages, disadvantages, problems and solutions, double questions, or unusual questions. So don't try and apply it to these other types of essays, but it'll be very helpful for opinion essays. Also, many of you have been asking about our VIP course. Um, I don't want to answer questions about the VIP course today because I want to teach you guys for free first and give you as much value and help you out as much as possible for free. So, but we do have a very, very small number of places available, but a tiny number. And we will open these up tomorrow at 9 a.m. UK time and more information about that at the end of the lesson. Many of you have been sending me emails and each lesson has been asking me about the VIP course. Let's focus on giving you the information you need for free first, and then we can talk about this at the end of the lesson. Okay, guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you some, some new things. 
We're going to look at this, which is called the ingredients of an opinion essay. And then we're going to show you how our student used this to help them improve their essay writing. We're going to show you this, which is the writing process, a writing process flowchart to help you understand exactly what to do. And then we're also going to give you this structure and show you how our student took a question. We're going to use a real question to show you how they use this structure to help them improve things. Don't worry if you can't read the writing. I can you know, go in and out um, and show you exactly what it means. Also going to show you uh, their full essay, what they did in that essay, how we help them improve their topic-specific vocabulary here and here, and then how we help them improve their, ver their variation of vocabulary by using this tool called Word Counter, and how we help them check their, um, their grammar and how you can use this to help you improve your grammar. Okay, so let's start off with this. So, as I said at the beginning of this lesson, imagine an essay like you're baking a cake, all right? So, some of you might know how to bake a cake, some of you might not know how to bake a cake, but there are two things that you need. You need ingredients, so flour, eggs, sugar, milk, whatever you want to put into your cake, and you also need a recipe which is you know, step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. But it doesn't matter how good the, the essay is, or sorry, it doesn't matter how good the steps are, the recipe is, if you don't have good ingredients. So the first thing I want to look at is what are the ingredients of an opinion essay? First of all, number one, we need to paraphrase the question statement. That's one ingredient. We need an opinion. We need to make that very, very clear. We need two main ideas. We need explanations. We need examples. All right. And if we have those things and we know how to do those things, then writing an essay becomes much, much easier. But if you don't know how to make these things, paraphrase, opinion, main ideas, explanations, examples, it's like trying to bake a cake with no eggs or no sugar and um, it's not going to be a very good cake so we're going to show you how our student our VIP student used this list to make their thinking very 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 clear because for many of you you're going into the test you're writing and you're not thinking about it at all you're just writing the first thing that you think about or you're just writing everything you know about the topic and you need to be a lot more strategic than this so let's have a look at our let's have a look at this first so what we did here with this student was we gave them this question Okay, so the question is, some people say that music is a good way of bringing people of different cultures and ages together. And this comes from the latest Cambridge Academic 14 um, book. So it's an official question from Cambridge. Do you agree or disagree? So the first ingredient that they need is they need to paraphrase. Okay, so what they did was they paraphrased this. It is often claimed that music is an effective means of uniting those of very varying backgrounds and age, age ranges together. So they have the first piece of the puzzle. They have the first ingredient already done. Um, this is a real student um, and this is their real work. So there might be some small grammar errors or some small vocabulary issues. We're going to correct them at the end. So don't freak out and be like, oh, that student has one comma in the wrong place. Like, just calm down, don't worry too much about that. Next, they need to have their opinion. Very, very simple, but this is, you might think this is really, really simple and really obvious. Most students don't do this. One of the things that you need to get a band seven or above is make your opinion very, very, very clear. Most students do not do this and don't know how to do this and get a lower score because of this. The next thing they need is they need two ideas. So what I teach my students to think about is don't try and think of 
complex ideas or impressive ideas, just try and think of the two most obvious ideas. What would the, if you asked 100 people, what would most of those people say? So why would this bring people together? Well, they have a shared interest, they have things in common, and you can teach other people about your culture because everyone has a unique musical culture, a unique musical heritage. But that's not enough. Um, many of you, a problem that you have is you list lots of ideas, you put multiple main ideas into your main body paragraphs, and you don't explain things. So we need explanations. So here are explanations. Now, for shared interests, many people from different countries like the same musician, so have something in common. Number two, can teach other people about your culture. Each country has unique genres of music, instruments, and anthems, and national songs, and things like that, that you can teach other people and get closer with them about that. But again, this isn't enough. You need to have examples of this. You need to go further. So let's look at the examples. Number one, K-pop or hip-hop or any other popular genre of music that is popular in many different cultures and in many different countries um, that you could use in a, as an example of bringing people together. Number two, Irish music or any other country. The VIP student who I'm working with, they are actually a student in Dublin, the capital city of Ireland. So they used Irish music because they go and go to lots of um, pubs and bars as, as that's our culture where we play music in their traditional Irish music. Um, so each country has unique genres of music, Irish music, but you could use, you know, any type of music that is, you know, any country that has a unique, um, you know, Jamaica, they have reggae, and, um, you know, in, in England and America, they have rock and roll. Um, in Japan, they have unique music. Everywhere has unique music. So you could use that for anything. So as you can see, what this student has done is they have taken this ingredients format, and they've taken that question, and they've just populated it here. And I'm not saying that you should do this to, to this level of detail in the real test, but what we get our VIP students to do is follow simple systems and then practice them over and over and over again. And then in the test, they're able to do this within just a couple of minutes because they've applied it to so many different questions that what they can do is they can just project this system onto any question and then do it over and over and over again. All right, so these are their ingredients. So they've got the ingredients. Now they need to follow our system and they need to populate a structure. Okay, so we'll look at those next. So let's have a look at the system. All right. So we have different parts of the system. Here we have pre writing, or sometimes people call it planning. This is the most important part. All right. Unless you, let me make it a little bit bigger. Unless you master this pre-writing part, you're not going to do very well, okay? So you need to master this part, and that is going to inform your drafting or your writing, where you're gonna write your introduction and your main body paragraphs, and your concluding, all right? But we also need to think about vocabulary, 25% of our total mark, and grammar, 25% of our total mark. So let's focus on pre-writing. So we've seen the question. We need to first decide our opinion. Do we agree or disagree? And for deciding opinion, just pick the one that is easiest for you to write about. Don't worry about your, your personal opinion or how you really feel or anything like that. Just which one could I easily write about? Which one do I know exactly what to do and what to talk about. So it's going to be easy. It's going to be either agree or disagree. Then we need to generate our main ideas and then we need to populate our structure. And once we populate our structure, then we can write our essay. We don't start writing. We don't do any writing until we have populated our structure. 
So let's have a look at our structure now. So this is a structure for an opinion essay, okay? It's not a structure for advantages and disadvantages or problems and solution or double questions or a group, you know, any other one. It's just for agree or disagree essays. And what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a basic four paragraph structure. You're gonna have your introduction, your first supporting paragraph, your second supporting paragraph, on your conclusion. It doesn't need to be any more complicated than that. You don't get extra marks for having five or six paragraphs. You don't get any extra marks for having you know, really complicated structures or anything like that. Just your introduction, your first supporting paragraph, your second supporting paragraph, and your conclusion. But let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Okay, so our introduction. These are not sentences. This is not sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, sentence four, okay? These are just elements. These are things you're going to have in your introduction. You might have two sentences, you might have three sentences, but you need to have these four things. First, paraphrase the sentence. You're not gonna write a background statement. That is a waste of time, it's completely useless. You're just gonna take the question and you're gonna paraphrase it. A clear opinion, state exactly what you think, and that's easy, either I agree or I disagree. Uh, the, doo -doo -doo. In the comments, um, please only write things that are relevant to IELTS, all right? Um, so we're gonna have paraphrase, clear opinion, and then this is my first main idea, and this is my second main idea. So the great thing about writing an introduction in this way is it keeps the examiner happy because they know that you can do these things, but it's also basically a plan for the entire rest of your essay. What do I mean by that? So let's have a look here at the main ideas. Main idea one, this is your first supporting paragraph. Main idea two, your second supporting paragraph. So you're gonna take your first main idea and put it into paragraph one, your second main idea and put it into paragraph two. So it becomes so much easier to understand, to write, and anything that makes it easier for you to write and easier for the, um, for the examiner to understand makes it much, much easier for you, okay? So, topic sentence. Let's look at our first supporting paragraph. And again, this is not sentence one, sentence two, sentence three, sentence four. This is not what we're talking about. These are just four things that you need to have in here. It might be four sentences, six sentences, seven sentences. It depends on the question, really, and your style of writing. What you're gonna have here is your topic sentence. Then you're going to explain your topic sentence, further explain it, and give an example. Next, move on to your second supporting paragraph, topic sentence, explanation, further explanation, example. That's it, all right? Then we move on to our concluding paragraph. We're gonna state our opinion again because our opinion needs to be clear throughout the entire essay. Summary of main idea one and summary of main idea two. Okay, so you can see this introduction matches your conclusion, right? Okay? You're gonna use different language, you're gonna use different words, but what the introduction is doing, this is what my essay is about. Here in the supporting paragraphs, this is the detail of it. And your conclusion, this is a summary of what I've just wrote about. All right, keeping it extremely simple. Um, many of you are writing in the comments, can we change this, can we change this, can we do this another way, can we do it a different way? There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of ways that you can write an essay. There are thousands of different variations. I'm not going to teach you a thousand different ways because that would be really stupid of me to do that. That's not a very effective way of teaching anybody to say, okay, here are a thousand different ways you can do things. I'm gonna teach you one way, one way that works and one way that is easy to understand, okay? 
if you want to do if follow someone else or do something else you are a taking a big risk because most other ways are not as effective as this and number two you are going to get very very confused all right and you don't want to be going into the, the question very very confused all right um, and the people who are asking questions I can't teach and answer questions at the same time so just wait until the end and then I will answer answer your questions okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and show you how a real student use this to populate their structure because again what we need to do decide opinion generate ideas populate our structure so here's what they did okay so just always remind ourselves about the question some people say that music is a good way of bringing people of different cultures and ages together do you agree or disagree introduction paragraph here's our paraphrase here's our opinion here's our first idea and here's our second idea all right obviously the introduction is going to look much different from this this is just our plan okay this is just exactly what we're going to write about and then we take this and then we start writing afterwards but if we write before we do this our essay is not going to be very good because we don't really know what we're going to talk about all right it's like trying to drive somewhere you don't know where to go without a map which is better is it better to have Google Maps or is it better to have no map this is like Google Maps for your essay first supporting paragraph here's our thesis statement our topic sentence here's our explanation further explanation and then our example okay people from many different countries are fans of the same artists this gives people something in common despite differences they will something they both love and will bond over this example of this is k-pop being po popular in many many different countries again people are asking lots and lots and lots of questions I totally understand that but I can't keep stopping and answer each person's question and teach at the same time just wait until the end okay guys second supporting paragraph when you meet someone new you can teach them about your culture through music each country has a unique musical heritage it is very interesting to learn about different types of music and this brings people together Ireland has a unique style of music instruments and language then on our concluding paragraph I agree with this because of commonalities and teaching people about unique musical culture all right so what they can do with this is this is a, a map this is like Google Maps for their essay and when you practice this and do it over and over and over again you can do this in like less than two or three minutes it becomes so easy to do it's like tying your shoelaces or riding a bike it looks complicated right now but if you learn how to do this it becomes much much easier and much much simpler and this is why we have helped more people get a seven or above than any other course in the entire world and I'm not saying that because I want to sell you courses or anything like that I'm telling you this because it's a fact and you can go and check that out on our website through all of our testimonials and our success story videos and all of those things so what our student is going to do now is they're going to write their essay so they've decided their opinion they've generated the ideas they populated our structure and now they're going to write the essay so let's have a look at what they're going to do drafting writer introduction then write our two main body paragraphs and you would constantly be looking back at the structure you'll be checking exactly what you're going to do and that means you are not going to get lost how many of you when you're writing an essay get completely lost then you're going to look at your introduction to make sure that you're on the right track and then you're going to write your conclusion okay so let's have a look at how our student did that okay let me increase the size a little bit for you again this is a student 
who was kind enough to share this with us. If you spot a small grammar error or they've repeated vocabulary or anything like that, don't criticize them in the comments, all right? They're probably watching this right now. And they were kind enough to share this with us, so you know, please be respectful. We're going to show you how we help them improve their vocabulary and improve their grammar at the end of this lesson, so please be respectful. So it is often claimed that music is an effective means of uniting those of varying backgrounds and age ranges together. So an examiner would be looking at this and they would look again at the question and they would ask themselves two, two questions. Does this mean the same as this? Yes. And is it grammatically correct and is the vocabulary correct? Yes. Okay. Then they would look at this sentence. I agree with this. Is their opinion clear? Yes, because people from different cultures often have musical interests in common and music allows you to teach different kinds of people about your country. Their first main idea and their second main idea, okay? Because this is their first main idea, people from different cultures often have musical interests in common and this is their second main idea music allows you to teach different kinds of people about your country. So this is a plan, an entire plan for the rest of the essay. The examiner looks at this and they know this person can paraphrase, their opinion is clear, their two main ideas are here, I know exactly what's coming up, and the person writing this knows exactly what is happening. So let's have a look at their first main body paragraph. People from many different countries are fans of the same artists. So this is their topic sentence. The examiner looks at this and, and thinks, this person knows exactly what they're doing because they've told me what this paragraph is about. All a topic sentence does is tells the reader what this is about. This allows people to bond over their shared love of the same band or musical performer. Therefore, they can get along with one another despite differences in nationality or even different generations. In many cases, people who would normally have difficulty getting along have no problem becoming good friends because of their musical idols. So they've explained how their main point actually answers the question, okay? And then they need to back it up with an example. For example, people from all over the world are fans of K-pop and even nationalities who had historical differences such as South Korea, Japan and China can happily enjoy the same concert. So a very, very good example from K-pop. I'm not going to comment on whether it's a good music or not, but I'll leave that up to you. Okay, so when you, so let's move on to our second main body paragraph. When you meet someone new, you can teach them about your culture through music. All right, so again, the, the examiner is looking at this and they know exactly what the paragraph is about because a topic sentence is just telling the reader this is the main point of the paragraph. Every country in the world has a unique musical identity such as different genres, instruments, and songs, thus providing the opportunity to teach a stranger about it. Good explanation, but they need to go further. One of the most effective ways to become closer to someone is to improve their lives by teaching them something new. And music is often very interesting to people, no matter who they are or where they are from. All right, so explaining the whole thing, explaining the reasons behind the main idea. Let's have a look at example. For example, Ireland has traditional Gaelic music and instruments such as the boron, and people from all over the world visit there to learn about this unique musical culture. Again, a real example, but you could use any, uh, you could use any country for that. Uh, for the example here, you could use hip hop, you could use rock and roll, you could use, I don't know, um, what <laughs> classical music, pop music, doesn't really matter. Um, for this one, you can use any country. Um, every single country in the world, I think, has a unique um, musical heritage and unique musical instruments and songs and things like that. In conclusion, I agree that music can bring people together because it cuts through differences people might have 
through things we have in common and allows us to come closer by teaching one another about our unique musical heritage. So what is in this conclusion? I agree that music can bring people together. This is their opinion. Your opinion should be clear throughout the whole essay, not just here at the end. Because it cuts through differences people might have through things we have in common. Their first main idea is summarized and allows us to come closer but allows us to come closer to by teaching one another about our unique musical heritage. Okay, again, their second one. So they have used this to write their whole essay. And someone in the comments says, I wish I could compose an essay easily like this. I'm teaching you exactly how to do that, all right? Some it's like someone in a restaurant bringing you your dinner and you saying I wish I could eat this I'm giving you Everything you need you just have to learn how to do it. All right by following this So let's have a look again at our essay sequence So what have we done here we've decided our opinion we've generated two main ideas populated our structure, and then we've used our structure to write our introduction, our main body paragraphs, our introduction, uh, or sorry, and then our conclusion. But we're not done, we're not finished. We need to look now at vocabulary and grammar. So there's two things that the examiners will be looking for when they're looking at grammar or vocabulary. They will be looking for accuracy, is your vocabulary accurate, and varied have you varied your vocabulary as much as you can not change every single little word but as much as you can there will be words that you just can't change um, or you don't know how to change but you should vary it as much as you can okay and you should try and replace lower level vocabulary with higher level vocabulary if you can so let me show you a few things you can do if you're writing an essay and you want to improve your vocabulary a little bit you can use this website called wordcounter.net. Uh, it's aimed at just counting words, but the great thing that it also does is it will analyze the number of uh, it will analyze the words and it will show you keyword density. All right. So this person has used the word people ten times, music six times, musical six times, different five times, about five times. Okay. So what this person could do is they could take the word people, go to thesaurus, and you have a number of synonyms. But what you cannot do, you cannot do is just immediately copy synonyms. All right, one of the synonyms is cats. <laughs> you can't replace people with cats. Um, and you also have to think of the type of word that it is. For example, rabble is a very negative word. Riffraff is a very negative word. Or tribe is a very specific word. You couldn't actually use that one. Um, so you might be able to use words like public or community. Um, let me see, do, 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 do. citizens maybe, and what they can do then is they could take their draft essay, search for very easily people, and just change it there, and you could go through the whole thing, but you might not be able to change all of them. All right, you can repeat some words. If you have a choice of repeating a word or using a word like cats or riffraff or rabble, repeat the word because those words are wrong. All right, you can't just use synonyms because thesaurus.com tells you that they're synonyms. Okay, so that's one thing we can do. What we also do with this student we gave them this article, and all we did was just Google some keywords from the question. So let's remind ourselves of the question. Some people say that music is a good way of bringing people together of different cultures. 
we just Googled that and this article came up. And if you have a look through this article, you will find hundreds of topic specific words related to music and related to culture. What we got them to do, we created a whole lesson for them on using this higher level vocabulary. We find lots of great vocabulary in there for them, such as conducive, soulmate, commonalities, differentiate, emulate, and then we set them lots of tasks. Um, like we got them to improve their vocabulary by doing that. You can do that yourself by using Google to Google essay topics. You'll find lots and lots and lots of articles if you find a word you don't know, like let's say you're reading through this and you go mm -mm -mm, repetition, I don't understand what that means, then you can use the vocabulary improvement plan. We gave that to you yesterday. We emailed that to you yesterday in lesson two. You can use this to help you improve your vocabulary. Okay. So another thing that you can do is looking through this, as everybody does, you will make some small grammar mistakes. All right, this person's grammar is extremely good, but like everybody, everybody makes grammar mistakes. Have a look at the process again. So we've varied any repeated vocabulary. We've tried to replace lower level vocabulary with higher level vocabulary if we can at the end. Now we need to correct any grammar mistakes, our final thing. I'm gonna show you Grammarly, but just be very, very, very careful with Grammarly. Grammarly is not a very useful tool for people learning English. Why? Because it will highlight mistakes and some of them are real and some of them are not real and you don't know the difference between them. I'm just showing you this quickly to show you the problems that this student has. Okay, so if we put this into Grammarly, it has highlighted three different mistakes. The rest of the grammar is good, just three different mistakes. And if we have a look here, punctuation, punctuation, punctuation. So this student's grammar is really good, but they have a punctuation issue. Guess what they should work on? Punctuation. They have no problems with articles, they have no problems with prepositions or tenses or complex sentences or anything like that, but they really do need to work on their punctuation. So what you would get the student to do is work on it, learn the rules of punctuation, do practice activities, get feedback on their work, and then they would be able to remove this common error. For you, you might have no problem with punctuation, but you might have a big problem with articles. You might have a big problem with tenses or complex sentences or conditionals. You need to find out what your common grammar errors are and you won't be able to do that by looking at Grammarly because you don't know if Grammarly is correct or it's not correct. You need a teacher to help you with that. And I'm not saying that because I want you to join my course. I don't care if you join my course or not. We only have a very, very small number of places and they will go immediately when I release them. I'm not saying that to get you to spend money with me. I'm saying that because if your car was broken, would you try and fix your own car? No. If your son or daughter had a health problem, would you try and fix that health problem yourself at home? No, you would take them to a doctor who would show them what to do. All right, so with your grammar, with your vocabulary, you probably need an expert, but not a fake expert, a real expert to show you what your common problems are, and then you can work on those. Okay, so let's just review what we did. We looked at the ingredients of an opinion essay. You need to know how to do these things. If, like baking a cake, if you've got bad eggs and bad milk, you're gonna have a bad cake. If you don't know how to write explanations and examples and generate ideas and give your opinion and paraphrase, you're gonna have a bad essay. You need to know the process, just like if you want to bake a cake, you need a recipe and you should follow that recipe step by step. You need to know how to do all of these things. 
and you also need to know how to use a structure. Structures are not magic. You can't use this and immediately get a band nine because your vocabulary and grammar is being assessed at the same time, but it will really, really, really help you, okay? It'll help you organize your thoughts. And like I said, it's kind of like Google Maps for your essay. You won't get lost. You'll know exactly what to do. And we also looked at how to improve our vocabulary. We looked at that yesterday and we gave you the vocabulary improvement plan yesterday to help you improve your speaking. And we also talked about helping you improve your grammar. Uh, very quickly on grammar, you will not ever, ever get a band seven if your grammar is not at a band seven. Why? Because grammar affects everything else. If you're making lots of, lots of grammar mistakes, it is bringing down your other scores. So in order to improve, you need to improve everything. Grammar, vocabulary, coherence and cohesion, and task achievement, the four marking criteria. And you should be aware of that. Okay, guys, so many of you have been asking me about the VIP course. As I've mentioned, we have a very, very small number of places. There are 17,000 of you, and there are less than 20 places, I think 17 places available. We will open these tomorrow at 9 a.m. It's completely shut. You cannot get in. There's a huge waiting list to get in. And we, I'll make a video telling you everything you need to know tomorrow here in the Facebook group at 9 a.m. You cannot get in until 9 a.m., all right? So what I'll do is I will make a video and I will tell you everything you need to know about joining the VIP course at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. And then we'll open the doors to whoever wants to get in. But remember, there's only a very, very small number of places available. Okay, so again, from myself and everyone here in the IELTS Advantage team, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. I truly appreciate you giving me your time and your trust. Um, there's a lot of IELTS experts out there. There's a lot of people who say that they're you know, the best in the world and all of these things and they have amazing strategies and everything. So, um, and I know how many of you, this is a big, life-changing thing for you and um, it will mean the difference between your life getting better and your life staying the same and you getting that job you need and uh, you know not getting that job you need or moving to the country you want to move to and not doing it so I know that it's a very 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 important thing for you and I really appreciate you giving me your time and your trust all right good luck in your test if you're doing it and if you need me you know where to find me and if you want to continue on your journey with me and you want to get more help, look at things in more detail, look at everything you need to know, we have our VIP course which covers absolutely everything and you'll be able to work with me personally and get all the help you need. So more information on that tomorrow at 9 a.m. Thanks very much, guys, and I appreciate your time. Remember, everything, all the three videos will be deleted at the end of the week. So if you haven't watched them or you don't understand them fully, you can watch them again and review them and you'll get everything you need, but get going because it will be deleted at the end of the week. Thanks very much guys. And hopefully work with a few of you further on the VIP course. Bye-bye. Hmm. Facebook won't allow me to end the lesson. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye, guys. Thank you very much.